What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 14 of the Charge to the Top here with Hereford FC and today I have for you guys a game from the Southern League Cup and it's the semi-final which of course you'll know we reached if you watched last episode which was the quarter-final and it was a really good win. Since then we've not played a whole lot of games over the last month or so but those that we played really haven't gone that well as you can see here four games played a mixed bag the first game against Shippenham we lost 2-0. Uh, we had a sending off. Keenan Bennett's got injured. He is unfortunately out for three to four months. Yeah, that's his season. And I talked about the fact we hadn't had injuries. Uh, so to see Keenan get an injury as severe as a torn calf muscle was bitterly disappointing. And unfortunately, it was just a bad day at the office. The sending off didn't help. It was still nil-nil at the time. But Chippenham, they made their advantage count. And unfortunately for us, uh, we were rather convincingly beat. Anyway, the next game we had away against Redditch, uh, we did well in this one, to be honest. We were 3-1 uh, down at half-time. We did well. We pegged them back very early on in the second half, and I was really hoping that from there, you know, with, well, the best part of just over half an hour remaining in the game at 3-3, we were going to continue that momentum onwards. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. The game did finish 3-3. Not a bad performance, though. I'm still relatively happy with that result, particularly given the fact we did come back from behind. Anyway, two more games to go through real quick and two 3-0 wins, the first of which came against Slough. As you can see here, Dan Townsend missing a penalty. He's missed a few this year, this guy. You know, he has half-decent finishing, his penalty taking's not too bad and his composure's not bad either, really, for this level. Maybe I need to get a specialised penalty taker for next year, though, because he has missed his fair share. Fortunately, it didn't cost us too much. Slough uh, relatively easily swept aside, as you can see. I didn't even make any subs in this game. That's how well it was going. And, uh, well, in the last game we had against Chesham, again, 3-0 win, this time away from home. They did have a sending off in this game. The game itself was actually fairly competitive. 3-0 uh, perhaps a little bit flattering, but at the same time, we got the win. Ote with the Man of the Match award. Anthony Wright having a fine game, too, as did Scully out on the right, a player who we are relying on now to really fill out in on the right hand side now, Anthony Scully of course uh, with the long term injury to Keenan Bennett, we need a man to step up there, fortunately Scully up to the task worth noting one more injury that has been going on, is Joel Driscoll our goalkeeper, he pulled his back and did a back strain lifting weights in training I mean, someone needs to tell him like to stop lifting. As a result, though, Dean Snedker's come into the side. He's a good player, this guy. He joined us at the start of the season just to be a backup goalkeeper. Um, he doesn't look too bad. He's had an okay start to his time at the club. Three clean sheets in four games certainly isn't bad. An average rating of 7.13. And, uh, well, we are going to be relying on him going into today's game. Speaking of which, as I said already right at the start, it's against Hayes and Yedding. Um, it's going to be a big game for us in this Southern League Cup. You can say, see St. Neots already made it through to the final. A team who themselves haven't really been standout, I guess, in our division this year. You can kind of see here, um, obviously, St. Neots down in 15th. Hazen Yedding down in 21st. I feel like in this situation now, we really have to be backing ourselves to do well. Um, you can see here, looking at the kind of stats of the season, Nick Wright has actually surpassed Ote as top goal scorer in the league right now. Um, but in terms of average ratings, Hanbury's been playing well. Obviously, Anthony Wright and Ote... They've been our two standout players really this year and they're continuing to perform well in the league. Obviously in the league, two wins and a draw and a defeat have been less than pleasing. But at the same time, you can now see that with the majority of teams having played the same amount of games with nine games remaining in the year, we are still relatively comfortable at the top of the table. Nine points clear of Salisbury. We have got a game in, uh, not a game in hand, sorry, but better goal difference than them as well, which is kind of like an extra point in some ways. Um, but no, we, we look fairly strong right now. We're in a good position. 91 goals scored is a, a massive total and it's pretty much incomparable to anyone else in the league. Of course, Salisbury promoted with us last year via the playoffs. They did very well and uh, interesting to see them kind of following us again this year at the moment. You can see the remainder of the playoffs, what's taken up by Weymouth, Gloucester and Dorchester, a team who we of course played in the first episode of the season where we beat them 3-0. They've found some really good form as of late and they've been kind of converting a lot of wins, scoring a lot of goals. And they're, they're a team certainly on the ascent. You can see the likes of Basing, Stoke, Dunstable, Chippenham, teams who were up in the playoffs very early on in the season have really fallen some way off the pace. Anyway, in terms of what's been going on at the club, there's not been a whole lot. Uh, you can see here, in terms of the overall balance, we currently sit with £367,000 in the bank. Last month, we didn't actually make a profit or a loss. We actually broke even. I think it was by about a few hundred pounds, actually, we made a loss. But you can see in that time... Um, we, we just didn't really play that many home games. 
which is um, one of our big sources of income. I am a little bit concerned that towards the end of the season, particularly with our season wrapping up in April and with the fixtures being fairly scattered out now, that we're not going to make that much money over the next few months. It is going to be a little bit tighter. But still, £367,000 in the bank, a fantastic total that, of course, and we spent close to that amount of money on new facilities at the start of the year. So to recoup that investment um, kind of in gate receipts over the course of this year is particularly good. You can see looking at our wage budget, um, we are under our budget now. I asked the board for a larger wage budget. They duly obliged, which was very kind of them. As a result, you know, we sit under our wage budget, which now sits at £8,500, a very, very generous total. Um, but it has seen um, kind of our overall wages swell, I guess, over the last month or so, just because for the most part, I've been renewing a lot of player contracts and some of them have substantially raised their demands. Players like Kane Smith is now on £500 a week, the club's big earner. He is the captain. He has been a very good player for us this season. And um, yeah, whether or not he wants the £500 is debatable, but he's an important player in our team. He's been in good form. And we kind of have to keep those kind of players on. In terms of our team for today's game, obviously without Joel Driscoll and Bennett, there are a few changes. In goal, I already talked about the fact that Dean Snedker will be playing for us. If we switch to the tactical view, which is a little bit more visual, you can see at left back we go with Lewis Blackshaw, joined us from Man City at the start of the year, played 32 league games. He's performed very well in them. And in the Southern League Cup, an average rating of 7.65. Uh, he's been a, a good performer in this competition. Kane Smith over on the other side, the captain, the big earner. Uh, he's doing, been doing well as well in this competition. A 7.45 average rating for him. In the centre-back positions, we go with Jordan Piggott. Uh, and alongside him, we go with Johnson. And these two guys should be the other way around. I don't know why they're that way around. Because Johnson is left-footed, Piggott is right-footed. Um, but regardless, they've kind of formed a nice little partnership. Uh, of course, earlier on in the season, uh, Dan Preston was kind of our big start in the centre-back position. He's kind of faded out of the team as of late. He doesn't really want to renew his contract without it being for some ridiculous terms. I talked about this last episode. I'm kind of waiting for him to just leave the club at the end of the season. I have been looking at alternative centre-back options, and this guy's jumped out at me. We've got him on loan from Bournemouth, and it's this guy, Jack Simpson. He's a good little player, um, as you can see, a left-back, but I kind of rate him as a centre-back, if I'm honest. You can see here, very well suited to this role. He's only 21. Uh, we have loaned him for the rest of this year. Uh, this year, of course, being the season rather than the calendar year. Uh, we're not paying any of his wages. Um, we've basically got him on a free, but we have got an agreement with Bournemouth that we can buy him for £20,000 at the end of the loan, if we so wish. So he may be a player who gets a little bit in the way of first-team opportunities. He is definitely an improvement on what we've currently got. You can see compared to George Johnson here, there's a pretty big golfing class as kind of uh, in terms of well-roundedness. Jack Simpson, a very good player, particularly physically and mentally. But he's not too bad when it comes to having the ball at his feet, kind of compared to other players at this level. Um, and he could be quite an interesting proposition, perhaps, at the start of next season to look into buying for £20,000. He's made just a handful of appearances so far for us. He's played okay in them. And he is on the bench for today's game here. Anyway, looking slightly higher up the pitch, Anthony Wright, the big kind of assister in the team. 20 assists and 9 goals for him this season in the league. He's been superb, the American, of course, released by Nottingham Forest. He came to us. I didn't really expect fireworks with two finishing, three composure and seven off the ball. But going forward, he has been very, very good for us. And, uh, well, that left mid position is pretty much locked down in his. Uh, right mid, of course, Anthony Scully coming into the side due to injuries to Bennett's. Uh, but he's been a good player for us, Scully, when we've relied on him. Five goals and eight assists across uh, 22 league games, of which two, eight are off the bench. In the centre of midfield, we, of course, go with Jay Harris, who scored a screamer a few episodes ago. I feel like that's what he's known for now. Um, but he's been a good player for us, the centre mid on defend. It's not an easy role to play in this team. We do play very, very attacking football. There's a lot of pressure on the man in the centre, who's kind of as a centre mid on defend, to really lock things down. And for the most part, he's done a good job of doing that. Um, as I said, it's not an easy role, particularly with how attacker we play. But he's been up to the task for the most part. Alongside him, uh, we have the club record appearance holder. It's Dan Townsend. Uh, the kind of, I was going to say young centre attacking mid slash centre mid. He's not young at all. It's just because he has a regen face. He's 27, of course. The fans love him, though. He's been a great player for us this year. Missed a fair share of penalties, if we're being honest. But he has nine assists. He's done well. Average rating of 7.07 .07 in the league. And an average rating in the Southern League Cup of an 8.18. So big pressure on him today. Up top for today's game, I am going to go with Sean Hambury, and alongside him, we're going to go with OT. Uh, I prefer to play them this way around, actually, with OT as the uh, the target man, just because the 11 heading and 8 jumping reach is kind of marginally better than how good Hambury is in the air. 
But regardless, these two players, very, very good forwards, great pace. They really do kind of trouble teams. And you can see between them now, 50 goals for the season. Looking on the bench, of course, we already talked about Jack Simpson on loan from Bournemouth. The other players we have, Duffman, um, of course, Tyrone Duffus, uh, a player who I brought in. I expected he'd play more frequently than he has, if I'm honest. He's one of the big earners at the club. He is expecting a big wage rise for me to keep him on at the club. He's not getting that wage rise. He may be a player who just leaves at the end of the season, unfortunately. But in truth, he's been a little bit underwhelming, particularly being one of the big earners at the club. Jaden Hall at right mid finds himself a little bit more frequently on the bench, as you can see here. He's made 11 appearances on off the bench, as well as three starts this year. Was a fantastic player for us last year. And, uh, well, with the Keenan Bennett's injury, he does find a spot on the bench for today's game. The next player we have, Darren Stevenson, uh, had a flyer when it came to the start of the season. It was absolutely incredible. Came out of the blocks kind of flying and he scored goals for fun and he made a lot of assists. Unfortunately, he got a semi-long-term injury and was out for six weeks with a sprained ankle. He's come back into the side and with Sean Hambury and Ote just performing so well, just hasn't found a spot back in the side. And it's a similar story really for Matty Hamilton, uh, who has nine goals in, well, 26 appearances for the team, 14 on off the bench. Um, but he's a big earner at the club on £300 a week, Matty Hamilton. He's not really performed to what we're paying him, if I'm being honest. This season's been disappointing by him for the most part. Granted, his opportunities have been limited due to kind of Hanbury, Ote and Stevenson just kind of starting ahead of him. Uh, perhaps somewhat unfortunately, Matty Hamilton's contract is set to expire at the end of next season. Given how much he's on relative to the rest of the team, he may be a player who we look to potentially sell in the summer. Um, although it's going to be tricky, I think, for us to find a team who are interested. Anyway, looking beyond that, on the bench, or, sorry, not on the bench, but on the kind of subs, uh, not subs, reserves, we'll get there eventually. Joel Driscoll, of course, out injured. Dan Preston losing his spot at centre-back this season, unfortunately, for him. Keenan Bennett's, of course, out injured. And with the exception of those players, really, just a lot of players who are rotation options. You kind of look at the likes of David Lynch... Um, I guess Mason Watkins Clark as well. They were players who were fantastic last year, and I kept them in the squad really as backups for this season. And uh, simply put, we've not had that many injuries to contend with, and as a result, they've just not had that much in the way of opportunities. But anyway, let's get into today's game against Hayes and Yedding. Uh, we are fantasied to win this one. We are the favourites. We are at home. This is the Southern League Cup semi final. The winner here, of course, booking their spot in the final. I don't believe the game is played at Wembley, unfortunately. Uh, but at the same time, we want to get some self-aware. We want to win this competition. Uh, I believe that this competition isn't contested. Well, I know for a fact it isn't contested by teams in the Vanarama National and the North and South Divisions. Of course, this being the Southern League Cup, it's for teams below the Vanarama level. As a result, we're just looking like we will be promoted this year. This may be our only chance to win this trophy. Um, so we're going to do our utmost to try and make it happen. Hayes and Yedding, they've struggled in the league, but I feel like the league, kind of the cup games are always a whole kind of different kettle of fish. You can't really take for granted league form and how teams perform in the league going into cup matches. It's one match to decide it all, and well, they score immediately, but it's a foul that's been given on the defender, actually, and the Hayes and Yedding players, they're not happy with the assistant. He's flagged for it. It was a kind of a scuffle in the box, and well, we're let off the hook just a little bit. The first shot of the game for Hayes and Yedding, and it was disallowed. Very fortuitous. Looking at the game here, we're already uh, a quarter of the way through it. Just the one shot all game. It's been for us, it's been on target, but um, well, it's been a bit of a drab affair so far. This is a cup semi final. The fans come to these kind of games expecting fireworks. I guess perhaps you expect a nervy, cagey match at times in these semi-finals. But given how well we've been playing, given our superiority, we're expected to come out here and, you know, score goals for fun. We do have the ball here with Piggott. Lays it inside to Dan Townsend. Some nice build-up play here. Harris to Ote. There's man on the overlap. Hanbury there is there. That should have been a goal. Great opportunity. Fantastic ball by Ote. The run by Hanbury was very good too. Unfortunately, kind of slotted wide of the mark and, well... Uh, Hazen Yedding let off the hook a little bit. The first clear-cut chance of the game comes our way, and, well, um, the finish was just lacking at the end of it. That said, we have the ball here. Hambry, he missed the chance before. Can he get the ball in the box? He can. Ote is there. It's 1-0. It's been 40 minutes coming, and, uh, well, we've been doing very well so far in this game. Despite a lack of possession, it's Ote's 29th goal of the season in all competitions, and, well, I feel like Hambry has made up for his previous error there. It was a delightful run by him. He finds some space. He puts the ball just where he needed to, slots it away. 
into the corridor of uncertainty. The defender doesn't know whether to go. The keeper doesn't know whether he should be coming out for it. And in the end, Ote, with a relatively simple finish, scores to put us 1-0 up in this semi-final at home. And the home fans, well, they are going to be loving it here. 1-0 looks like it's going to be how it finishes in the half. I've spoken too soon. There's going to be a chance. Pickett clears it. And, uh, well, Hayes and Yedding will be looking for a goal here right before half time. It's a good tackle there by us. Townsend now picks up Ote. Hambry has pace. Could he get there? Could he beat the keeper? He can't. Manning beats him to it. Harris, though, an ambitious ball out wide on the left-hand side. Uh, kind of doesn't quite find its mark. Although he's going to have another chance for the ball, Harris. He gives it away again. And Hayes and Yedding, they're coming maraudering forward. Harris, though, he wins another tackle. He loves winning uh, the ball in the box. So he loves a tackle. And now Ote trying to use his pace. He's been fouled. Is that a penalty? A bizarre turn of events here it looked like the hazen yedding man was got was kind of between the ball and ote chasing onto it but unfortunately um it seems like he blocked off his man he's been given uh well he's been penalized he's been given a yellow card we now have a chance from the spot i talked about down dan townsend's lackluster penalties and the may the fact maybe i should look for a more specialist taker or look to change the taker of the team dan please score for us he does score the keeper went the right way but Dan Townsend holds his bottle. It's going to be two goals right before half time in the space of six minutes. And, uh, well, that puts us in pole position, you'd think now, to go on and win this game. We have slipped up a few times this season, though, from this kind of position, from being two goals ahead at half time. So we need to make sure that we remain switched on. But I am very pleased with that first half performance. We've done exactly what we needed to do. I'm going to tell the players they've not been bad, but they can improve. You can see the average ratings really not to stand out for us. Two goals very late on in the half, the difference maker here for us. But, well, with two goals to the good, we just need to defend solidly now, ride off this momentum, maintain our superiority. Hayes and Yedding yet to have a shot on target. And we're going forward here, right, disappointing ball into the box, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, Hayes and Yedding, they've not had a shot on target. They've not had a shot at all. They had the disallowed goal, of course. But that is pretty much all that we've seen from them this game. Although Brown bringing the ball forward here for them. All it takes is one chance to score a goal. Johnson clears it. Leonard hits it. What a goal that is by them. Hayes and Yedding with a bolt out of the blue. It's Leonard with it. And, uh, well, it's 2-1. It's his second goal of the season, but it's one to remember. Brown whips it in. It's an absolute screamer. We can't really fault the goalkeeper here. On the volley. Bang. Pick that out. You don't stop them. You do not stop them. And unfortunately for us, it's not one in our favour. It's a, a goal which I can't help but watch with a smile on my face. And while there's another set piece here, they have that disallowed goal from a set piece. They've scored again from a set piece. Hayes and Yedding have turned this around. What has happened in this match? We've gone from 0-0 after 40 minutes to 2-2 after 50. Disappointing marking. Leonard, who scored the goal with the ball in. It's flicked on. And, uh, well, dear do... He gets it in and he scores a goal. And, uh, well, is it Daidu? Answers on a postcard as to how to say that geezer's name. We have a set piece now. What is happening in this game? Absolute madness. Well, I said that this game was cagey. It's not cagey anymore. Both teams are just slugging it out. No one wants to defend. People want to score. Ote wants to score. The keeper has had a mare there. I'm not going to complain. Ote, 30th goal of the season for him. It's his second goal of the game. Smith here, he dinks the ball over, it's headed down by Hanbury, and then Ote on the hit, the keeper's got to do a little bit better, perhaps miss-sighted, there were a few players in front of him, and uh, kind of between him and the ball there, but well, it's 3-2 here, absolute madness, I think is the best way to describe the last kind of 20 or so minutes of football, it's 3-2 here, the goals have been flying in in this semi-final we're free to up. We've been the better team. Hayes and Yedding, they've had two shots on target and they've both flown in the back of the net. They've had no clear-cut chances, no half chances. But, well, it's goals that matter and they're looking for another here. They're on the attack. Macklin, Clark, he hits it. It's blocked away. What a block that was by Johnson. That was pretty much stopping a clear goal-scoring opportunity there. Not sure if the keeper would have got to that. And uh, now we just need to deal with this. Ote, nice header away. Townsend, unfortunately, can't pick it back up. Into the mix, it should have been a goal. It's been blasted over there by Hayes and Yedding. Uh, another chance from a set piece that's wasted, but, well, I don't know what to say. 20 minutes left in this game. The midfield's not been great. I'm going to bring in Jaden Hall. I'm going to bring on Stevenson as well for Anthony Wright on the left-hand side. Uh, Piggott not had a very good game at all. I'm actually going to make a sub of a centre-back with 20 minutes remaining. We are rolling the dice. We are changing all three of our players and doing all three of our subs at once here with, well, 19 minutes remaining. 
Pickett's not had a great game. Jack Simpson going to come on to him, for him. Jaden Hall and Stevenson out on either wing. I'm hoping that, you know, the new blood out wide, the fresh legs, can perhaps cause Hayes and Yedding some problems. They've really grown into this game. And I need to make some tactical changes. Normally in this kind of situation, if we were performing well, I wouldn't be perhaps quite so panicked. You know, I'd be quite happy just to stick with what we're doing. Uh, the kind of fundamental issue I've got here is unfortunately... Um, the stats don't lie, and Hayes and Yedding are getting back into this game. They've had a fair few chances. Um, so we're going to change around some roles. I feel like we're going to stay on attacking, but our defensive role players will very much stick back now. It's more so the support role players who are going to push forward when we do have the ball. But, um, well, six minutes remaining in this game. It's 3-2. It should have been a comfortable result. And, well, Hayes and Yedding in the second half, they've stepped up, but... We are clinging on for now, but there is still time for a goal. And, well, it's going to be them going forward with it. Macklin lays it to Leonard, who scored the screamer before. Inside to Diadu. Macklin's through. Can he score? He can't. Snedka holds on to it. Of course, not our first choice keeper. Right, that's just time waste, please. Time waste. Sit deeper. Lump it forward. Yes, that. Two minutes left. That's going to be all she wrote. We have... Ridden our luck in this game. I feel like we probably are deserved leaders. But Hayes and Yelling stepped up in the second half. They gave us a game. The goals, all five of them came flying in. But at the same time, we've made our way to the final. Uh, Ote scores his sixth goal of this cup campaign. And while well, we now go on into the final, um, which is going to be against St. Neots, if I remember correctly. And that's going to be a very big game for us now. In that semi-final. Ote with the man of the match performance. You can see here the final actually takes place over two legs. So that will be when we come back I think. Next episode will be a double header of the Southern League Cup final. It's going to be a massive, massive tie for us. I don't know when the draw for that is being done. Normally it would say so in your schedule. Maybe if we just continue once just to see if it comes through. But yeah, there is no draw, I guess, technically, because we're playing St. Neots. Public service announcement, auto saves, save, saves. I have my saves on new save every time, fortnightly. If you don't use auto saves, use them and make sure you have a rolling save. So if one of your saves goes bang, you'll have a backup. And if you don't know how to do that, I'm going to show you in a second as a public service announcement because... I know I get people who get the kind of could not load save game error and they're kind of 20 seasons into their save. And I feel like if you were working on, I don't know, a project, be it an essay, be it a paper that you were writing and you were writing it for 20 days, you'd probably keep backups of it in different places and you should treat your FM saves with the same love and respect. So if you don't know how to do this, you go to preferences, click on use auto saves. You can sit set here kind of every fortnight. I use every new file for every save. If you have a small hard drive, that might not be the best kind of type. But yeah, it means that the game will save automatically every two weeks. And well, I was guilty. I'm saved in two weeks. So the game has done me a favor there. Anyway, the Southern League Cup final, I thought the draw would be done for it. We already know we're playing St. Neots, and we know when that's going to be. Uh, for people wondering, Jack, why are there all these random players being scouted? Uh, I am currently in the process of scouting every single player, if I just set the parameters. I'm in the process of well scouting every single player who has a wage under £1,000 and is uh, has a contract that is expiring um, kind of come the end of the season because of course a big part of being a lower league team is kind of poaching players up on the cheap if you can see here we've got lots of these players being scouted right now um, not all of them actually I should probably be scouting more of these although the reason that they're not showing up is because I've unticked realistic transfers because your scouts lie and stuff but yeah you can see here a wide variety of players uh, with contracts running out I can actually recognize a few players here um, who, because I when I set up this save, I have every single English player in the FM database loaded. There's quite a few interesting players here who I believe are playing in New Zealand but have English nationality. So they're kind of showing up. I don't think we could actually realistically sign them because they wouldn't want to join us. Should we, should we check? Ben Harris here. He looks quite good. Plays for Team Wellington. He doesn't want to move countries, anything but a full-time deal. But if we can get a full-time deal, we might be able to get a player like Ben Harris in. But yeah, that's why I've got all these scout reports coming in. Basically, every single player with a contract expiring um, at the end of the season based in England as well. That's probably an important kind of thing to put. Um, we are we are currently looking at scouting. And the reason for that is, is there's about 300 players I'm looking at. I'm hoping that, um, obviously... Um, 
some of them will want to sign. The reason I've untipped realistic transfers is because although they might not be realistic now when they're released and they become free agents, they are a lot more interested in joining us. And as you can see here, um, there's just loads of players I'm scouting. I'm not expecting many of these to want to join me. But of course, it's always worth just keeping a big kind of scout database going. And you can see here, even kind of dating back to last season when I scouted players in a similar way, there's players here who haven't found clubs who may be kind of useful signings for me. Players like Hayden Hollis here, who I think used to play for Notts County, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, variety of players and... Um, yeah, it's just good to be prepared. I know we're only in February, but scouting players who might be available for freeze in May, I mean, it, it pays to be prepared. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this from me, guys. As I said, next episode, episode 15, will be the Southern League Cup Final. It's going to be over two legs. It's going to be against St. Neots. Um, they're a good team. They're not a crazily great team, but I still feel like we should be beating them with relative ease. Um, and yeah, hopefully I will see you guys for that one. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like. It's greatly appreciated. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.